Hello and welcome everyone, my name is Meeplus and this is Literally Graphic. And today I wanted to review the graphic non-fiction book, Gender, A Graphic Guide by Meg John Barker and Jules Scheel. I did review another book in this series, Queer, A Graphic History, before the channel reset but haven't reposted it yet will do soon. According to Goodreads, Dr. Meg John Barker is a writer, therapist, and activist academic specializing in sex, gender, and relationships. Their popular books include the anti-self-help relationship book, Rewriting the Rules, The Secrets of Enduring Love with Jacques Gab, Queer, A Graphic History, with Julia Scheel and Enjoy Sex, How, When, and If You Want To, with Justin Hancock. Meg John is a senior lecturer in psychology at The Open University and has published many academic books and papers on the topic, including Non-Monogamous Relationships, Sadomach Sadomasochism, Counseling and Mindfulness, as well as co-founding the journal Psychology and Sexuality and the activist research organization by UK. They were the lead author of the Bisexuality Report, which has informed UK policy and practices around sex bisexuality and are currently co-editing a book on non-binary gender with similar aims in that area. They are involved in running many public events on sexuality and relationships, including Sense About Sex and Critical Sexology. Meg John is a UKCP accredited psychotherapist working with gender, sexuality, and relationship diverse GSRD clients. Illustrated by Jewel Shield in their website portfolio, they describe themselves as follows, a freelance illustrator, comics artist, and graphic facilitator based in Glasgow. I specialize in graphic storytelling and illustrations that help translate and bring human touch to difficult concepts, and my art focuses strongly on mental health, queerness, activism, and community. Selected past clients include The Guardian, the BBC, the Edinburgh International Television Festival, Transport Scotland, the Scottish Books Trust, the Scottish Political Archive, Kerrang, Vice, Image Comics, Dark Horse Books, Routledge, The School of Life, Open Distro, currently I co-run Ghost Comics Festival, a yearly festival that co showcases the work of alternative comics artists based in Glasgow. This book and Queer were published by Icon Books, which is an independent publisher of thought-provoking nonfiction. We publish science, history, politics, philosophy, psychology, humor, and much else besides. Besides dealing with a, quote, controversial issue, end quote, there's not anything really to warn you about. One instance of our cartoony boobs in a frame that shows Adam and Eve from the waist up. The summary in Goodreads is as follows. We'll look at how gender has been done differently from patriarchal societies to trans communities and how it has been viewed differently from biological arguments for sex differences to cultural arguments about receiving gender no received gender norms into complex and shifting ideas about masculinity and femininity. femininity. Look at non-binary trans and fluid genders and examine the interactions of experiences of gender with people's race, sexuality, class, disability, and more tackling current debates and tension which can divide communities and even cost lives. We'll look to the past and the future to ask how might we approach gender differently in more socially constructive, caring ways. As I mentioned in my original review of Queer, but can't but you can't view as of right now, is that the format of this book, including its art, is designed pretty precisely to maximize memorability. Each section is only about a page long with a snappy title, and about half of that is taken up by visual representation of the material. For a visual learner like myself, this kind of nonfiction graphic novel thing really helps me remember things. It also means you can pretty much just put down and pick up whenever you want. It's a great coffee table sort of book and a great way to dip your toe into many different parts of the history and future of this concept we call gender. 
One topic they cover that I cannot highlight enough is the history of public washrooms and how misogynistic and racist practices and ideas have shaped our concept of public washrooms that is only starting to be questioned. Obviously, gender is a focus for this book, and I agree with it, so it's all good. <laughs> I guess it would have been nice to have more new information, but as I pointed out just now, there are pretty this, these are pretty introductory works, and as someone who's had to do much rethinking about gender, I'm a bit past the 101. Sexuality was touched on a bit, although Queer A Graphic History is by the same creative team and tackles more of those delightful things. As a pro-intersectionality work, race and class are integrated very well into this graphic guide, highlighting some of the black people who are highlighted include Bell Hooks, Kimberly Crenshaw, Dr. Ornette D. Clennon, Hijoma Oluo, Sojourner Truth, Alice Walker, Audrey Lord, Alicia Garza, Rennie Ido Lodge, Tarina Tarana Burke, Serena Williams, Marsha P. Johnson, Laverne Cox, Mariah LaRossi, La N.K. Jemison and Travis Alabanza. Apologies for any mispronunciations there. They also dig into the way that colonization and decolonization have affected different BIPOC people and their background does include fairly diverse NPC people. Not very surprisingly, my impression at this point is that disability versus ability was the weakest link. There are a couple of graphics that highlight people sitting in wheelchairs, but there feels like a lot more could have been done in topics covered. Bye y'all, keep reading and resist white supremacy. And as always, Literally Graphic is recorded on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation. I live here because of British colonization, indigenous genocide, and more geographically specific, Treaty 13, also known as the Toronto Purchase, which was finalized in 1805 between representatives of the Crown and certain Mississauga peoples. This treaty was a lie and has since been broken many times over. Saying so reflects only my own small steps towards knowing the truth and does nothing for reconciliation.